So Nisha, are you ready to sell the fuck out? I am so ready. Let's do it. So if you're watching this within a few days of it going live, a couple of days ago we had a sponsored video, uh, sponsored by the people who made the clothing I am now wearing. And those guys were so nice that I've decided to make an extra video they're not paying for. Um, just using some research they did that we did not use for the sponsor plug of just cool figures from Japanese history. Um, so if you're at all interested uh, in anything that I'm wearing, um, I'm really sorry if I'm not doing it justice. This does not go with my skin tone, Nisha. <laughs> I'm wearing like baby blue with pink on it and then a white hoodie over the top. I look so bright in the, like, the, the preview on the video clip. Like, I tried to wear the beanie earlier. There's a beanie here as well, but I put it on like vanilla ice. I was like, I can't have it. I don't want that screenshot floating around, I'm really sorry. At least you'll be easy to edit around with the green screen. Oh yeah, just key around me instantly. Right, it's a cool company, Psycho Apparel, run by a fellow YouTuber who's a really nice guy and has personally promised to buy me a pint, which means I'm forever indebted to him until I get that pint. But Nisha, without further ado, do you want to hear about some cool figures from Japanese history? They researched for me. Definitely. Go for it. Okay, we're going to start with... Oh god, I just realised my pronunciation is going to be so bad for this. Oh god, no! It's a good job they're not paying for it, innit? So we got the first one on the list is Mochizuki Chiyomi, who's a female ninja, so already off to the strongest start. So like, I fucking love Ayane and Tenshi. Let's go, baby. Who made a 300-strong female-only ninja clan out of orphans, prostitutes, and bad wives. Why is that not a movie? So basically, this video is just free movie ideas for Hollywood so far. I'd watch that movie. I'd watch that anime. I'd watch that. Get, get the guys who made One Punch Man to make that shit. Especially in today's climate, given the shit women have to deal with. I think we are owed just an immaculately edited series featuring a woman, um, Izuna dropping a shit man off a waterfall. Aw, that'd be so cool. It's just, like, what is it about, like, ninjas are already fucking sick awesome, but it's like female ninja. Oh, I know this one. The next one is Yasuke, uh, or Yasuke. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Are you familiar with um, Yasuke at all, Nisha? I've heard the name before. I'm just not sure what the story is. Well, oddly enough, it's one of the most suggested things to talk about on the channel, uh, which is why we've not talked about it, because if it's being suggested by random fans, it's probably already too well known, but fuck it, it's listed here. And he was the fable, the original Black Samurai, and he was a, a slave who was taken over to Japan. And like, not much is known about his backstory, but what is known is that he was a relative giant compared to everyone walking around in Japan at the time. And the famous story about him is that when he was first introduced um, to a Japanese warlord as a curiosity, uh, he was ordered to be taken to a bath and have his skin scrubbed because they thought he'd been darkened with ash. And when it was decided that, oh no, his skin is just that dark, um, he accidentally killed somebody because the amount of people rushing to see him caused a human crush which killed someone. So he killed someone by proxy, that's how much of a badass he was. Uh, his reputation preceded him even before he had a reputation. And it was said that he had the strength of 10 men and he went on to become a samurai and the right-hand man of, let's see if it's listed here. No, so I think it was um, Odin Obunga, uh, but I'm assuming there'll be a fat bar below correcting me on that or a weeb in the comments. But he was the personal valet of a very famous Japanese warlord and, and reached the rank of samurai. But as if having the title of the Black Samurai wasn't cool enough, um, the guy Yasuke pledged into died, meaning that Yasuke technically became a ronin, meaning he was the Black Ronin which is like the best title I've ever heard and is a, a band name I implore people to steal. And the reason I love Yusuke's backstory is that no fucker knows where he went. So he just disappeared? He just disappeared. And bear in mind, this is a six and a half foot tall, giant black man walking around Japan in full samurai armor and he disappeared. Uh, the next one we have is Yoshiro Nakamatsu, who was a Japanese inventor. Oh, I know this one, uh, because I believe uh, yeah, he says here that he has the most patents of anyone in history, over 3,500. And his name uh, is, he, as you pronounce it, Nakamatsu, but uh, like he took the U off his name and it's actually Nakamats, but he actually you pronounce Nakamatsu. He's like, oh, I didn't like writing the U, it took too much time. <laughs> I wanted to save time, so I took one letter off my name, but you've still got to pronounce it. And uh, he's like 85 years old. And every day he goes to a swimming pool and sits on the bottom of the swimming pool and tries to drown himself. Because he thinks that 
at the moment of expiration um, is when like your brain gets flooded with endorphins. That's when ideas strike. So his creative process is almost drowning himself and be like, got an idea. Uh, I'll be honest, that, that's not how I come up with ideas for my articles, but I'll have to give it a try if I ever run out of one. Yeah, I've had a creative blog for ages, so maybe I should give it a go. Maybe, maybe. Um, uh, Dr. Nakamatsu has got the idea there. Just stick your head under water for like 10 minutes. Don't do that, folks at home. That's a really stupid idea. <laughs> no, don't actually try it. Well, it says, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, he's also the guy who invented the floppy disk. But in addition to inventing the floppy disk, he invented other less well-known inventions, including a wig designed for self-defense. A and wig? A pen that works underwater. I believe it's a wig that you throw at people. <laughs> That just makes it even funnier. I'm just imagining this sort of unpredictable weapon. So you, you get this wig thrown at you and you're like, what's this? And then, then it explodes. Yeah, and then he just punches you right in the fucking face and then says, don't mess with Doki Nakamatsu. Uh, the next one we have is uh, Ishikawa uh, Goemon. Again, I'm really sorry if these pronunciations are butchered. I do not speak Japanese. It's not a language I'm all too familiar with. Oh, he was the Japanese Robin Hood. Oh, I remember this. Um, it says here, yeah, he was uh, famously had a brutal execution. And his execution was that he was boiled alive in oil. But the reason his execution is so famous is because I think his son was also condemned to die with him by boiling in the oil. It was a huge cauldron. And what he did, being a fucking badass, was hold his son above the oil to save him. And they were so impressed by how badass he was that he was like doing like the Terminator 2, just sinking into this molten liquid that's searing off his flesh. They're like, well, I guess we better save his son. Clearly, he's too much of a badass. And there is artwork of this, and it's incredible because Goemo had like, a huge big afro. <laughs> so you just see this giant ninja with an afro just like holding someone out of boiling oil. And I like to think it's the other way around, and that's just how he arrived in rooms. Because, oh. But yeah, he's the Japanese Robin Hood, so he just robbed people and gave away the gold. So they tell that story in The Dark Knight, but that guy who was just stealing stuff and giving it away. Yeah. He was basically that dude. I've just googled Japanese Robin Hood, there's the picture, there's the afro. Yeah, the huge big afro as he's like dunking his son out of um, a bath of boiling oil. What a neat dude. And then the other one we have is uh, Hiro Onada. Um, that, that nice familiar. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the one. He's the guy who fought in World War II for 70 plus years or something like that. Yeah, uh, he was still in an island on the Philippines until 1974 because he didn't believe that the war had ended. And the story goes up, there was rumours of this guy being in the forest for years and no one believed them. It's like, do you know, there's a guy in the forest who will just shoot you if you go in and it's a Japanese soldier who's still fighting from World War II. The story is that he got separated from his unit and just continued acting as if World War II was happening. And for years it's like, yeah, there's this weird guy who lives in the jungle who just stabs you if you go near him. Uh, they, they had to go get his original commanding officer who was like in a retirement home, bring him into the Filipino jungle and just tell him, look, the war's over, you can come home. <laughs> Fucking hell. So they waited 70 plus years to go tell him. Oh God, like, well, no one believed he was there. He was like a, 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 an urban legend. So there's just a, there's a crazy Japanese guy in the woods who stabs people. I won't believe that. Yeah, that's scary. And then he was, he was real. And that was actually the entirety of the list they originally sent. They want me to read out at the end of the aforementioned sponsor video. But... The reason I wanted to turn this into a full-fledged focus is because Ross Boomsox himself was just, he got so hyped researching these people, he went out and did his own independent research to find more and sent along an additional list of people that he thought was super cool. So let's mention those as well, shall we? So we have uh, Nakano Takeko, uh, the samurai equivalent of the suffragettes. So he organized a bunch of women to join the front line and battle without permission. So again, we've got battle waifus. Where's that, where's that show? Hey, there might be someone who watches this video who's like an animator or producer. I'm gonna make that into a movie. That's awesome. That's fucking sick. There's just something, again, it's such a strong thing of like the female samurai, because that reminds me of possibly one of my favorite character designs in anything. And it's Biken from the Guilty Gear series. And if people are wondering, Carl, why do you like Biken? Here's a picture of Biken from Guilty Gear. And Nisha, on your end, you just want to type in Biken Guilty Gear. Already on it. Yeah, is that a, that's a cool fucking Holy character. Holy shit. <laughs> that's a fucking awesome character. It's the hair. The hair the is hair, awesome. The eye patch. It's the swagger. She's got one of the best idol poses and walk animations of any character. It's fucking incredible. 
She also has one of the best themes of any character in a video game. Here's a section of it. Uh, speaking of which, we have Tamoe Gozen, a female warrior during the Genpai Civil War uh, in Japan in 1180, made a name in medieval times for her beauty, strength, and skill in battle. During a single battle, collected the heads of seven different mounted warriors on her own. Ooh, that was badass. So during one battle, personally went out and cut seven people's heads off, and those people were riding horses, meaning they were about 12 foot above her. Personally led a force of just 300 soldiers and managed to emerge victorious against an enemy numbering over 6,000, um, only losing five of her own men. You know what, I might have to fucking write an article about her. She sounds awesome. What the fuck? That's so cool. <laughs> like, where, where are my films about kick-ass female warriors cutting people's heads off? There's still time. There's still time? Fucking hell, that's like the last one, but I, I respect Ross so much for going out and just saying, you know what? Carl needs an excuse to talk about Biken. Let's give him an excuse to talk about Biken. <laughs> this video is not sponsored, but the sponsor went out of their way to provide that research. And it's so fucking awesome. I wanted to mention it in some capacity in a video. And that's what I'm doing right now. So uh, while we're not making any money for this, I do implore people to go check out uh, Psycho Apparel. It's run by a good bunch of dudes who allowed me to just spend the last 15 minutes chatting some shit about some cool ass people and let more people know about Biken.